As much as video game developers want to make games that are both enjoyable and welcoming to players, many of them also want to keenly poke a little fun at their paying customers too. And so some games take it upon themselves to directly rib the player. And while this is all in good fun, it's sometimes so pronounced or weird that it qualifies as a sure act of trolling, and a damn unhinged one at that. And whether it's a fully intentional gag or a quasi-accidental glitch, in each case, players felt like the developers were aggressively thumbing their nodes at them while cackling maniacally. Whether you found these trolley moments funny or annoying, however, is likely to vary wildly. But at least there's no arguing with the creative commitment to the bit. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games that trolled players in insane ways. Number 10, toggling arachnophobia mode delivers a nasty surprise, Evil West. Given how widespread a fear of spiders is among the general population, it makes sense that an increasing number of games are including comfort settings to either reduce or entirely eradicate the critter's presence on screen. Beyond being a genuinely decent thing to do, it's a smart financial decision that gets more interested eyeballs on your game. The recently released action at Evil West quite laudably warns players before they visit a dark cave filled with spiders, giving them time to enter the settings and toggle the arachnophobia mode, which causes all the spiders to disappear and leaves only their webs behind. But curious players who toggle the setting on and off again will get a rather terrifying surprise, an absolute load of spiders flooding the screen. It still isn't clear whether this is an uncomfortable glitch or developers flying wild hogs simply toying with indecisive players, but either way it makes for quite the pant filling sight whether you're an arachnophobe or not. Number 9. Ghosts photobomb your selfies. Yakuza 6 The Song of Life. It's well known that random NPCs will attempt to photobomb your selfies in the Yakuza games, but in Yakuza 6, Sega decided to take it one step further. In the sequel, you just might get bamboozled by a damn ghost while taking a narcissistic snap or two. Throughout the game, you're able to collect 10 photos of dead former acquaintances during select locations around the game map. If you take a photo, they'll simply show up in it. Each of the 10 dead characters can appear in four separate locations, making a grand total of 40 areas in the game where you'll be haunted while simply trying to take a picture. Given that Yakuza 6 hardly spells the side quests out to players, many were understandably spooked when they found a grotesque otherworldly presence making an uninvited cameo in their image. Even several years after release, it's continuing to give players the surprise heebie-jeebies. Number 8. Reset your console to continue. X-Men 1993 1993's X-Men game for the Mega Drive pulled quite the fast one on unsuspecting players in the late game stage Mojo's Crunch, where a screen literally flashes up instructing the player to reset the computer now. Many players understandably assumed that the game was either joking or referring to some sort of in-game mechanism, rather than the Mega Drive itself, especially given that the console's relatively primitive architecture would surely lose all your progress with a reset, right? Right? As it turns out, there's a trick to it. Hold down the reset button and you'll trigger a hard reset, indeed wiping all your hard fought progress. But if you instead lightly tap the button, it'll simply move you through to the next section of the game. Considering that even modern games rarely ask you to interact with the system hardware like this, it was a totally out of nowhere request. And combined with the level's urgent time limit, basically felt like Sega toying rather cheekily with their own customers. Number 7. Dio, a vampire, can't be used in daytime stages. Jump Force. JoJo's Bizarre Adventures vampiric Dio is a playable character in Bandai Namco's short-lived crossover fighting game Jump Force. And what many players initially assumed to be a glitch was in fact developers perhaps trying to be a little too cute for their own good. Upon release, fans noticed they couldn't play as Dio on a select number of stages, until others pointed out this actually wasn't a glitch at all. Rather, Dio can only be used in nighttime stages due to his vampirism, which would of course cause him to turn to ash during the daytime stages. Given that most of the stages take place during the day though, it's a bit of a bummer and left some people understandably miffed. After all, does anybody really care about a beat-em-up committing to realism or internal logic like this? It's all moot now anyway given that Jump Force was delisted from digital storefronts at the start of the year and its servers have been turned off over the summer, but still. Number 6. Rewind your system clock and trigger an alien invasion. The Sims 2 DS 
The Nintendo DS version of The Sims 2 is a wild ride, all right? And despite the series' seemingly breezy, easygoing nature, this version sure doesn't suffer fools lightly. Players who get themselves in a spot of bother and attempt to reverse their fortunes by time traveling, that is, rewinding the DS's system clock, will end up punished for trying to undo their failure. They'll soon enough receive a text message from the Strange Town Hotel's concierge, who will call them a quote, wicked little time traveling cheater, before announcing that an alien invasion has begun in Strange Town and blaming it on the player's time meddling. Players will then be treated to a brief video showing the aliens taking over, after which they'll need to whip out their super soaker water gun, or rather super drencher for legal reasons, to eliminate the aliens. Given that cheating has always been an expected and even encouraged aspect of The Sims ever since its inception, it definitely felt a little callous to chide players for winding back the clock, especially with so many Sims fans being children and otherwise non-gamers. Number 5. Enemies can hear you reload on grounded difficulty. The Last of Us Part 2. To be completely fair, only the most skilled or sanity averse of players would even attempt to beat The Last of Us Part 2 on its highest difficulty setting, Grounded. From the outset, it's a punishingly brutal experience where supplies are ultra scarce, enemies deal considerably more damage, and most aspects of the HUD, such as listen mode, are disabled. It's a mode that will bend players over its knee and snap them in two for even minor mistakes. But as players begin to realize shortly after release, enemy combatants are also given a savage hearing boost. Case in point, you don't just need to worry about moving around quietly, because on Grounded, nearby enemies can even hear you do something as benign as reloading your gun. It's a telling demonstration of how the game's AI scales across difficulties, and further confirms how only the most diehard and committed Last of Us players need apply. That's without even getting into the optional permadeath modifier, whereby a single death results in a game over. Have mercy. Number 4. Treating an injured leg with low intelligence actually works. Fallout New Vegas. Intelligence is one of the key stats in the Fallout franchise, and though playing Fallout New Vegas with purposefully low intelligence is fun for a few specific moments where NPCs react differently to you, overall it's probably not worth doing a full playthrough this way. And while most of the low intelligence gags basically make fun of how stupid your character is, there's one which actually subverts player expectations entirely. While aiding Argyle in attending to the wounded boomers at Nellis Medical Station in the side quest Volaire, you're warned that attempting to operate on a man with a badly wounded leg could kill him, and that a medicine stat of 50 or more is required to pull it off. Nevertheless, if you select the chop 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 low intelligence option in a baffling turnaround of fates, it's revealed that your random acts of cutting in fact saved the man's life, while apparently allowing him to somehow keep his leg. Hilariously, a clearly irritated Argyle then calls your surgery dumb luck, and he couldn't be more right. Still, it's pretty good going for a dimwit. Number 3. The Secret Gory Status Screen – The Dark Pictures Anthology If you've played Until Dawn or any of the entries into Supermassive's Dark Pictures Anthology series, you'll know each game has a status screen for whichever hapless meat sack you're currently playing as. While this status screen changes according to what's happening to your character, it's supposed to be inaccessible once they're dead. However, with a well-timed button press, you're actually still able to access this status screen for a short window once your player has started to die or been killed. Surprisingly enough, players who do this will be greeted by an altered character model, which will show the dead or dying character in whatever state their model is in in-game. That is, typically in a state of gory mutilation. Though this is probably technically a glitch and not something developers actually intended for you to see, the fact that the game continues to actively track a dead character's model post-mortem is nevertheless fascinating, and quite the gnarly surprise for anybody quick enough to catch it. Unintentional trolling? Perhaps. But but trolling nonetheless. Number 2. You can't play certain missions if CJ is too fat. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Years before body positivity was much of a thing in mainstream culture, we had Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which introduced the ability for players to shake protagonist CJ's appearance 
to their own desires, whether swole, lean or fat. And while options are almost always a great thing, the unfortunate byproduct of packing on the digital pounds is that the game will ultimately rip especially plus size players for it. There are a few missions in the main story which, due to the player needing to use a jetpack, can't actually be beaten if your CJ is obese. And so trying to start these missions will result in an alternate cutscene where you're told to lose weight. Worse still, you'll get blasted with insults calling you a fat ass and to come back when you've lost some weight, fatso. Yikes. Basically, the game fat shames you into losing weight in order to actually beat the main story. And while shedding the pounds is simple enough in game, it's nevertheless a surprising reaction in a game so intently focused on player freedom. Let our thick CJ fly, damn it. Gosh. Number one, the ultimate anti piracy measure Earthbound. Plenty of games have found their creative ways to punish those who dare to pirate their games, but perhaps the mother of all passive aggressive feats of trolling goes to the legendary RPG Earthbound. Rather than outright preventing players from playing the game, Earthbound's copy protection makes it such a miserable and ultimately heartbreaking slog of an experience, you'll probably wish you just splashed the cash on a legit copy instead. First and foremost, if the SNES detects a pirate game, it floods the overworld with considerably more random enemies than in the legal version, to the extent that progressing through it becomes a massive chore. Certain areas will cause the game to freeze, and even if you persevere through to the final boss fight against Gygus, the game will hit a hard wall by freezing and forcing the player to reset their console. When they load the game back up, they'll discover that their precious labored over save file has been deleted. Given that in the mid 90s YouTube didn't exist and allow law breaking players to just watch the end of the game, pirates who played Earthbound upon release were up the creek without a paddle. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video games that trolled players in insane ways. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.